From the World Bank, Joseph Nibiru Tejito. Thank you so much. Buena tarde. Good afternoon to you all. Good afternoon, good afternoon. At this time, at this moment, you know, it's like we're using modern technologies of computer science or information to be uh, efficient or be more efficient, to, to make our processes efficient. So we've spoken a lot during the previous session about modern technologies. But the question is, how is it that we could establish the following for governments? How could we establish for governments the better conditions to profit by using these tools to increase the impact when trying to deliver public services? To obtain an answer, I have the honor and the pleasure to introduce two, uh, two colleagues of mine from the World Bank that will speak of the great efforts of this institution to give us diagnostic information about the capacities of our governments when trying to adopt these technologies. First, we have our colleague, it's Kimberly Jones. Kimberly is a senior expert in the public sector and global leader of GovTech with global practices of good governance, of good government, of the World Bank. Her work is centered on the digital transformation of all government, digital governance, lending services, and citizenship participation. She has a lot of years of experience working in IT and solution development, uh, reforms, institutional reforms, and policy reforms. She's been working on contributing by providing a set of reports of governance, including uh, admin reports, accountability, and uh, the fight against corruption. Uh, Mr. Daner is a leading expert in global practices of governance of the World Bank. Jim has contributed to the efforts of modernization of the systems used in public finances and government programs, digital programs, in over 60 countries 
during the last two decades. He has a lot of experience when designing systems and defining and developing solutions for public sector projects and private sector projects. Without further ado, I would like to invite Kimberly Jones. She'll uh, share her presentation that's already streamed on the screen there, Kimberly. Thank you so very much. Good afternoon to all of you, to all the stakeholders. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this panel today. I and my colleague Denner are in, delighted to participate in GovTech panels with the maturity index of GovTech amidst digital transformation. GovTech or GovTech captures the public sector modernization and it simplifies what we do in over 190 technologies. GovTech and technology and governance is a very important subject. We define the concept as government focused on modernizing the public sector that promotes promotes simple, efficient, transparent government initiatives at the center of the reforms. We have the citizens. We're modernizing holistically our governments, and it's centering in its activities in universality and having access to the services delivered to the public in government administration. GovTech is a main concept. It'll lead us to use disruptive technologies effectively data, computer science as well. These are uh, public data platforms. We foster the use of data by subjects or other individuals, other government agencies as well. We are supporting we are supporting startups, new companies with GovTech ecosystemically. We've developed innovative instruments as a response to the challenges that we find in the public sector. The concept of GovTech or digital government is a concept that have existed since decades. There's iterations. GovTech is a major definition, part of many amendments. We're centered on public services. Public services are being transformed in their totality, to, and we want to have a transparent government system. A partner of GovTech is an ally of ours. There's a trust fund, there's sponsors. The fund provides different sources of budget. In three pillars, we can see the data branches out. There's the analytical maturity index, public policies. We're exercising positive law. We see the impact of GovTech in it all. Another component, it's the second point. There's GovTech and global partnership. The third point, we're providing uh, good solutions that are part of the essence. And it's disruptive. We know that the use of these technologies is disruptive in the pilot phases. Another component is the fact that we're committed at a regional scale. In other countries, we've defined diagnostic data. We have conference, prototypes, trials, tests, which are the response mechanisms before the challenges that we in our economies execute. We have GovTech programs. Next slide. As part of the next slide, we want to see that when we build partnerships, we can generate diagnostic data, dialogues, innovations for all the members' economies in Latin America and the Caribbean. Thanks. Next slide. I want to give you a case of reference. We have the SOL Solutions, or SOL. This is an app defined for government procurement. It was an open source or open data solution, and it simplifies procurement for a smart community. The results are these in the slide. We have an enhanced auditing capacity. We see where are the gaps, achieving transparency in the whole cycle of transparency and governance. This is a bit of what we've been generating. We are highly analytic and have focused on the, uh, the maturity indexes of governments, or GTMI. There are 17 indicators that constitute the index, as I've told you. This is the index, the average of the ratings or the scores of the other four components that we rate. There's 
Government Index or CGSI, we're talking about the top subjects of managing uh, human capitals using computer science, the cloud, interoperability of platforms and systems. The second point leads me to speak about the private sector or PSDI, the public services and the delivery index is constituted by websites online, archives online. The third point is the index of citizen engagement. We have six indicators. We have open data analysis to measure the interactions between the us and the citizenship. We can improve the interaction times and measure the results of the effort. We have the GTEI, that's GovTech Enablers Index, that leads us to analyze the strategies, agencies, government bodies. What, that's the bedrock of GovTech. We've also analyzed the digital ID or the identified and other cases. The index enables us to take this to practice. We design public policies, public programs with it. It's the threshold. It's the gateway for this development. Next slide, please. I know that there's many indexes of digital gov tech that have been created thanks to the scholars, public, private sector. In the index, we measure the status of things in digital government. I want to give you an example. The index that's been developed by the United Nations is one. There's another one that's a global innovation index. We have the OCDE indexes. and. These are useful indexes. You can see them in the matrix. They're constituted by different elements, and they have been measured differently by different agencies. There's gaps that we've detected. We analyzed that we lacked a government index that enabled us to see the bedrock of what was happening with the GovTech. With reliable data, we have constituted this maturity index and that narrows the gap. The results of the 2020 GTM studies are here in the matrix of data. You have the data is set. This is, gives you a snapshot of the ma matrix of the GTMI results of 2020. And amidst the pandemic, we had to work on populating the data from sources of data that were of public domain and government agencies. I want to clarify, this index is not rating economies. We're just grouping economies or members and measuring their maturity. There's group A. Group A, economies are GovTech leaders. Group B, significant focus on GovTech. And C, we have a medium focus. Some are focused on GovTech. And D, are, have a minimal focus on GovTech. You see the ratings or the scorecard, depending on the performance of the economies involved area by area globally. We identify best practices in areas of improvement. In the next slide, we see the global landscape that gives us the frame of the scale and the results. I could, could you fall back one slide, please? One slide, please, where you can see the map. No, here, that's the map. There. You can visualize it uh, previously in that sneak peek, you see the results of impact. There's 43 countries classified in group A, 22% are using digital solutions that have advancements. This leads us to analyze best practices in the focal four pillars of GovTech. You include Mexico, there's 59 countries in group B. Those countries in group B are promoting significant investment in sectors, different sectors of GovTech. There's Costa Rica, Rwanda, Polonia, Costa Rica. 62% of the economies fall in type C. They're working on developing their interest in GovTech, including Ethiopia, Zambia, Venezuela, amongst others. We have measured the ratings in other economies. The data is from 2020. We see what happens with the global maturity index. We see the Republic of Somalia, Yemen, in another ranking, in another type. I want to share fundamental messages to you right now. In general sense, we see that there's best practices in all levels, in all instances that we've developed to obtain the maturity index. I want to highlight some points. First, we're engaged at top level, high level to manage resources right, human materials, material resources in this transformation to the digital world. We're operating between different systems, sharing information in horizontal and vertical. 
There's many electronic services of operations that are in inclusive and plural. When we try to engage the citizenship with this, we see that the use of multifunctional platforms enabled by lateral communication between citizenship and government, which leads the citizenship to use their voice, achieve transparency and accountability. The scalability of these technologies are multiple in different sectors. We want to be multifunctional and use this technology in all the sectors when exercising our duties. The data are the key for us to open the threshold of the digital world and GovTech, which is open. We can obtain benefits and provide greater value to our administration. The GovTech development requires skilled innovation, ecosystemic development at a local level and design to implement these. These are the strong points that I wanted to communicate. Denner, Sam will use and now will take the podium to speak about the regional reports of 2022 of GTM. Thank you so much, Kimberly. I hope you can all hear me. I'll continue talking about what my colleague has just mentioned in the next slide. Kimberly summarized the information very well. There's expectations based on the GTMI. First, with the index, we want to have clarity and understand the maturity of the index that's been measured in over 190 economies. We branched out into four central pillars. We have to be very practical when using platforms that are updated with certain speed. Every two years, there's improvements or upgrades. We analyze with the platforms all the trends and visuals so we can improve our practices, so we can learn from each other to achieve the implementation along with innovations with the scalability of the solutions. The version 2022 has the data that's been mentioned. We measured the index with external internal consultations and other parties involved. In parallel, we wanted to be benefited by rolling out a survey on online to compile data. At the end of this month, we generated a website to visualize the data so we could interact with it easily as users. In the slide, we want to focus on Latin America and the Caribbean, obviously, but I want to share the general scope or landscape of what we obtained with the reports of 2020. We're ending the estimation or calculation of the index this 2022, but based on the initial findings during the investigation, as Kimberly mentioned, we want to measure the index at a regional scale. We have progressed a lot, and that's the trend by tradition. So we see what's being used in the PFM sector and in other sectors for many years. At a regional scale, LCR in Latin America and the Caribbean are regions that saw the benefits with the index. They found support in the solutions that we provided for the, there were digital solutions. This initiative started in the decade of the 80s. So the results prove with clarity that there is investment that's been important to develop these systems. We have channels of services, platforms that are very progressive, that have been de defined for countries we contrasted, compared the developments between countries. We're facilitators. You see all the countries in the slide. We need to find advantages by when using technology to innovate our region. It's very important. It has its effect. I'm sure that in the 2022 edition of the report, the landscape of the maps and the economies was similar. That other report will be submitted timely. In this matrix of data, you see the detail of the index, how we estimate the economic index country by economy. We saw the detail, and it was the ideal time. We highlight the color-coded the information in the matrix. You see the economies in the regions are classified in groups A and B, 16 out of 33. So there's maturity. They have budgets being allocated for government development that we have analyzed throughout the years. So there's room for opportunity as well in other economies we can see that there's more development or more maturity. We're going to analyze the details and all the reports that we're going to study later on. I'll share now in this slide what happens with the whole landscape of the Mexico's rating or the host country's rating. We contrast the information of year 2020, 2022, the trends, the expected results, the 2020 reports, the matrix is there along with the results of the survey. 
segment by segment. Mexico, in this contrast, is in the ratings. Mexico classifies as government in type A. It's a leading country. We've monitored the progress in four pillars or four specific areas. We rolled out the survey, as I told you. So they use compatible tr platforms and tools that are used as support with all our existing systems. This is a case study, very practical. We're fostering other programs with open data or sources or information so that deliverables are sent to the right stakeholders or digital channels. You're going to see that in the compiled survey information. We can measure the ratings of the countries individually. We can see the general scorecard in its multiple facets or dimensions or layers. You see the data, the score, the measurements that took place in 2020, the 2022 data sets, and the rating. We analyze the score sector by sector. There's 150 fields that we had to populate with information. Now there's 151 uh, fields that need to be populated with data. So the level of scrutiny is very thorough. We see the responses of the survey. Now we have a clear, profound map of the details. You can see the score in both in both data. There's a system of reports. We measure the performance regarding the use of the systems and that's that's object of improvement. The measured services and the progress enables us to coordinate things better. Apparently these are these are areas in which we can improve based on the results that are the outputs of the survey. I must highlight one point. Once we roll out a survey to 150 countries, 150 responded. 34 countries answered the rollout survey in a few months. We gave the economy sufficient time to give us answers, but we noticed that the level of interaction gave a number. 158 government officials answered the survey. They part of the exercise. Some economies were ready to continue compiling data. They were establishing the internal mechanisms to communicate their initiatives and efforts. We strengthened the communication between stakeholders, allies, and government. The, this has been very strong. We have updated the report's information in many countries. With other economies, we just barely received some responses. They asked some questions. Different economies asked us as stakeholders where to find the information that had to be populated. We had this dialogue with our stakeholders or counterparts. They contacted co and communicated to us. They work with their systems, with their platforms and software, and we have to make sure that whoever is using the platform has the mechanisms to really go through the digital transformation, which is material. It's useful to practice this, to take it to that exercise so we can all learn from each member state economy based on lessons learned. In this timeline, at 2022, we see when the information was updated. Everything summarized in the time frame. It kicks off in November 2021. We dedicated months to that process of consultation. Nine entities participated from from United Nations, the, develop, the economic development agencies and other stakeholders were clearly focused on the analysis. Financial institutions wanted to know which were the sources. We sent them a set of questions, they were interviewed, and we asked them for their feedback, which generated the indicators or the maturity indexes that you're observing. Based on the indicators, we generate a survey that's object of a review that's uploaded online that was sent to during the month of March, we invited 190 economies. There were no exceptions. And in parallel, we decided to implement this in a process of pilot, of trials, to improve the GTMI. There was a second rolled out survey to measure the progress of GovTech. We sent it to Brazil, to nine economies in total. We sent the secondary survey to Mexico, to the parties that had an interest. We noticed that other countries wanted this secondary rolled out survey, and we compiled data via these two surveys, as I've said. Some economies contacted us, and we continued working compiling data at the end of July. And there was an extension of time till mid-August. We worked on validating data. We, as economy, shared our results. The results of the survey are there. We highlight the data or the results that there's uh, numbers that are a constant. And we ask the economies to compile information 
we corrected that, we compiled that, we reviewed the reports, and during September, we obtained stable data or data sets to calculate the GTMI, our maturity index. As I've said, we obtained indicators from the United Nations and other agencies or bodies to measure our resources and ourselves, as you well know. And then we worked with these indicators which were obtained last week. We studied them internally. The indexes that are object of study lead us to analyze cybersecurity and its complexities. We wanted results, hard results that really favored the generation of this index. And we'll see what we're expecting in 2022. We're going to make the results of the report public in 2022. We're going to upload the results in our website and the user interface. We're going to analyze the addition of that report. You're going to see it timely. As I've said, it's going to be a public domain as long as the, the results are there. We have the best practice, the chapter of cases of reference. We have the, the chapters of cases of Nigeria and other countries. We see how the index was updated. In the future months, we're going to see this. To summarize, I'll tell you, and I'll be brief. We worked a lot. We went through the major exercise. We used many platforms between June and July. We compiled so much data, 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 called in counterparts from government so they can question us, interview us, and question our index. They scrutinized. We compiled information for, from 145 countries. And it's the first time that we've obtained the participation of all these economies. Over 100 and 850 government officials participated on, from 164 countries. We compiled data from the countries. We generated a data set. And based on that, we analyzed what these countries looked like. We had, as I've said, 850 government officials from 140, 164 countries participated till August. We closed the survey then, we shared a data package, we sent it to central governments, which were part of the survey. This is the, the result or the matrix of the 2022 GTMI survey. This is a set of questions with each line and item. The 2020 GTMI data leads us to analyze these other 14 indicators or this list of indicators and sub-indicators. We have a platform. We have a correlatable strategy. Let's explore. We asked ourselves, how are we using these platforms? How can we find power in the, when using the platforms? How did the platforms generate reforms, reports? Where are the savings? We wanted to ask, where are the benefits? Benefits, which are the government mechanisms to improve the platform. Is there a third party that's an auditor that monitors and tracks the use of these platforms? Who uses the channels of these services? How is government exercising their duties? How are these platforms used in general? The participation of the citizenship is important. We see the list. There's feedback. There's platforms to generate feedback. Who are the enablers? Are there digital entities, government agencies? The programs, we ask ourselves, are the programs mandatory? Are we involving the private sector in these efforts? Are there innovative programs for the developers of technology? Are we documenting? Are the documents object of amendment? Are the work documents or instruments modified? What is the government gaining when we're going through the digital transformation? That's why this index is it's a tool that leads us to monitor every sub-indicator or sector. We see the public and private sectors, the SMEs, the startups. We're fostering the development and the growth of those sectors. We want to improve procurement of the public and private sector when using disruptive technology. We're trying to verify what happens in each sector with all the indicators that are fundamental. All the indicators that you can read in the list lead you to tick conformity, nonconformity to the survey, yes or no. Answering or ticking 
each question gives us indicators. The answers are there. That's the basis. That's the proof. That's the exhibit or the evidence. We, what happens with the use of platforms in the digital world of things, if we see the details in this matrix. We have over 40 indicators that enable us to measure what happens country by country. We have a secondary data set, which is important for those who draft the law, for the legislative branch, for those professionals who to work in these positions. We have to measure best practices that meets governments. It's a collegiate body of government. What are we doing? We've rolled out the survey for more than 90 economies. Do we need to know what happens in the field of infrastructure development and architecture? Let's work on these developments based on evidence. There's open data. We use disruptive technology. The questions that are in that package of lists of, of, or matrix of questions can expand your vision of the whole horizon of the roadmap. There's questions, there's answers. We understand how we're using the systems, how we're managing them in over 190 economies. We analyze the functionality and not just that. In parallel, we have to monitor operations. We have to analyze that in the Ministry of Treasury and develop systems. There's electronic challenges, assets management, public exercise of resources. You see GTM, and this is part of what you have in domain. You see what happened in countries item by item in the rollout survey. We work with open data, measure the services, and see what's happening with the institutions. With the information, we see what's useful for each area and sector of interest. In this instrument, as a conclusion, we give you the package of data in the report 2020 edition. It's an exhibit. It's proof of what's happening in the four branches that we're analyzing. How are the professionals going to work with the data? How is the legislative branch going to use the data to draft laws? Let's contribute. Let's build that future amongst economies. Let's be facilitators. Let's share best practices. Let's work on in these workshops. Let's speak. Let's debate. Let's organize ourselves. And lastly, I want to inform the World Bank is now working on specific initiatives. We're working on 2020 data sets, 2022 data sets. We're defining how to allocate budget to exercise for this development that's going to be used in the next two years. In the World Bank, we're using this system for our proper operation. The platform is going to be data visualization at the end of the month to simplify any user's life. When a user needs to interact with a pr platform, we need to improve the user's understanding. What's the output? What's the output? What's the proof? How are we going to narrow the gaps? The use of this will be great. We expect, we hope that the updated data, the report of 2022 edition is going to narrow the gaps and improve our exercise. We are working based on evidence. We're sharing the best practices with different economies. Let's work with the parties that have an interest in these endeavors. The data in this report will be updated every two years. The index was measured in the field of GovTech. Thank you for your full attention. These four slides, I'll share them with you briefly. There's cases of reference from different countries or member states. The information will be updated for the future edition of this report. Thank you for your attention. Jen and Kimberly, Jen and Kimberly, thank you for your presentations. And we have a question now, and that uh, they posted online two questions. The first one is is in relation to qualitative and quantitative measures. 
which are the conditions for these measurements and which are the quantitative and the qualitative measurements. Is there a method combining both of them, uh, both of the quantitative and qualitative measurements? And also, how are we going to interpret them? And we are going to interpret the indicators used by the surveys. And in the following question, I'm going to read it in Spanish. And of course, you can use the translation devices. Digital and electronic government is the digital transformation the means to reach an optimal implementation of the digital government in our countries? Okay, is that digital transformation the best way to reach the digital government implementation in our countries in Latin America? Well, I think that those questions can be answered first, and once they are answered, we can continue. I don't want to spend too much time in this. Jane, uh, did you want to start? Well, I will start with the first question. In relation to the type of indicators and what are they measure, measuring, and in terms of qualitative and quantitative measurements, I will explain them. There are a lot of indicators that are checking the presence of something due to the fact that the platform is available or the institution put up in available another platform, there are many questions over each key indicator. And it must be seen if there is an evidence or a qualitative performance or the qualitative performance of a platform or of a business. If in a business is there is something published in the website, we need to see if there is a report. All these questions give a lot of information about which countries are reaching the solution of these problems because sometimes we find that some countries face a lot of reports in the web and they cannot see the links. And so if they can go and visit the website, the users can also go directly to the website. But if they say, this is not a public report, this is confidential, it's OK. But some other countries feel shy in sharing the results and performances in different platforms, including the services. And so many countries are saying, no, we have not uploaded them yet. Well, that means that they are not uh, sharing their information, but they are uh, very useful because we will uh, use them for the uh, GMTI scores. And um, based on that, we will see if a country will be a or uh, will be lowering of the status. And that is important because from our perspective, it, it is not enough just to say there is a system. No, we need to prove the performance of that system. And that is the situation of the future technologies and today's technologies. Thank you, Jen. And now I will uh, focus on the second question. And that will be addressed to the implementation and the way of the digital transformation. In the last years, I have seen uh, how critical is technology in the implementation and development, but also the resilient uh, service in providing that. In the beginning, I talk about the transformation of the current government into a digital government. That talks about the digital journey that never ends. There is always a new technology, a new solution, and new concepts. So it is always changing. But the question in relation to implementation is exactly what Jane has just mentioned. 
it's one thing on one part to have the strategy and the other hand to implement it. Either we are talking of a new software or a collaboration, and there the management plays an important role, as for example in our bank. We, if we know which countries have work in the implementation, they must implement, and we must also know how they have supported the users. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, are there more questions or comments? If not, I will take uh, the advantage of the position I have now. Jen and Kimberly, while the audience is ready for the uh, next answer, I would like to ask you, right now we have a room full of accountants and the, the most influential public accountants in the region. And we know about the responsibilities when they prepare financial information. It must be very useful for taking decisions, uh, for committing uh, officers to the accountability. How can contribute our influence to use the results of a survey and go on? in the use and in the adoption of digital technologies in the region. Thank you. I will start, if you allow me. As you know, I have had the privilege of working in different countries of the region, and it's impressive to see, for example, that in the Caribbean, we have outstanding use of technologies. For example, there are other state members of the United Nations and other bodies that also implement this. But the challenge is the diversity of platforms. For example, when we talk about software and platform development, for example, we can use all these for these transactions? And is there a monitoring mechanism for the performance? Well, that is a question of all our customer nations with whom we work, because we know that there is a na national mon mon monetary fund that has improved the platform in accountability by improving quality in the reports and in the data. Our international agencies, they have systems to monitor transactions and conducting audits. And they also create sensors and use artificial intelligence and machine learning and then tr exchange information of public and private uh, informations that are important and critical to improve the digital skills of uh, agencies and public institutions. Therefore, we need to create public data. And we can create it from the government public data through sophisticated tools. For example, the last speaker before our session said that Mexico and other countries, they have detected the use of data sets to improve efficiency of the technologies and to detect other emerging solutions. It's important to know this for accountants and for seeing uh, which are the results that can be used for people in, and go to data analysis instead of purging them. Uh, we can see the expenditure patterns, the plans. Well, the digital tools allow them to see them very well and monitor and track the performance of the platform. I think that the support is, must be given and focus on the digital transformation in the region. This can contribute a lot to the global agenda. The 
this is my answer. Maybe Kimberly can give more uh, compliments. Oh, Jane, your answer is quite broad. I don't have any more additions. I will just give some suggestions to see the facilitating agents and uh, how to merge qualitative and quantitative because not for only having one platform, we can potentialize the use of certain information sets in finance. We must see the, ex uh, the capacity to exchange data. If, for example, if there are different tiers in a system, that can represent an obstacle in sharing data. Well, then thank you, Kimberly and Jen, for your presentations, uh, for abide by the time assigned to you. Thank you. 